morning, ladies. Happy Monday. I'm sorry, I'm a few minutes behind on our live recording. We had a dryer issue and that needed to get fixed. <laughs> the life of a mom, right? There's always something going on somewhere. So I just want to um, thank you for tuning in today. We've got a great live today. This is really based on God speaking to me while I was on a run on Saturday. Um, I said, man, I don't know what I am going to speak about <laughs> on a Monday. I had a complete like brain fart of what was going on. Um, and God really spoke to me on a treadmill run. So don't be surprised where God shows up. If you are questioning working out today, work out because God can speak to you there. He can speak to you here. He can speak to you anywhere if we're looking for it. So that's the message that we are going to be talking about today. If you are joining us live, let us know. Hello, we record our live podcast here every Monday morning, right around 10 a.m. <coughs> oh, give me one <coughs> second. Rick Max, calm down. I apologize. So we are um, going to be chatting about that today. Um, but first, if you are joining us live, say hello. Um, if you have any prayer requests, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. We're always looking to pray for you. That is what this group is all about. So drop your prayer request as a, um, a post. Drop your prayer requests here in these comments. Send me a message. If you feel comfortable saying what you need prayer for, please feel free to post that. If you don't and you want it to be an unspoken prayer request, that's fine too. You can always drop an emoji. So if you don't know that is my SOS that you need prayer, you can always just send me a message with an emoji and you will know that I am praying here alongside you. So again, every Monday morning we will be here. You can catch us on any podcast app. You can also catch the live video on YouTube by searching for Fit and Faithful Moms. All right, let's start off with prayer and then we'll get right into it. Father God, I just thank you so much for today, um, for the ability to gather together and speak about your word. Lord, thank you for bringing this platform for women from all over the world to come together and focus on you for a short time together, Lord, as we talk about scripture and our health and scripture and our nutrition and scripture and our fitness and just in our lives as moms. Lord, um, remind us of the blessings that we have today. Father, there are a lot of teachers going back to school this week. Father, I cast um, and I ask that you cast all anxiety out from them, Lord, fill them with joy, remind them that they are pillars of light for um, the children that they are going to come in contact with. Moms are sending their kids back to school. Um, give them courage and strength to know that they're being sent in to the right teachers and the right classrooms. Speak and put your blessings and your um, protection around their children. And for the fellow homeschool moms, um, continue to fill us with strength and guide us and lead us and strengthen us so that we know what's best um, for our kids. Lord, you have given us these kids um, to raise and to lead and develop here on earth, but ultimately they are yours. Lord, remind us that they are gifts from heaven even in the challenging times. We love you. We praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Good morning, Jenny. So we are diving deep into this, what you see, um, live today. So I was on the treadmill. Um, I am back to running. If you don't know, I had, um, torn my ACL in October of last year, almost a year ago now had surgery right after Christmas had surgery, December, 2021. Um, right at the end, got to get that <laughs> insurance deductible. I'm like, we hit our deductible. I have to have surgery this year. So it was the 29th, like right at the cusp. Um, and I am back to running. I was not supposed to be back to running. Um, and I talked about this last week. Running 5Ks was a warm up for me before, but I'm consistently running 5Ks now and it feels 
amazing. What once was a warm up and not a workout is now a workout for me. It's a very hard, so in different seasons, you might look back and say I'm behind, but you're really not. You just need, haven't looked at it in the right context, right? The context is different as you move later on in your life, later on in your 40s, later on in your 50s than it was in your 20s. So stop comparing yourself to your 20s if you need more help on that. Last week's podcast is for you. But also in this season, I've gained weight. Um, I felt inadequate. All of these things happened and I battled a lot with depression, um, especially because fitness and nutrition and this not only is my livelihood, but it's it really is what I love to do. And I love um, how I feel after I work out. I love my connection with God while I'm working out. And I sort of had um, one of those weeks last week. And uh, just a reminder, your coaches, your personal trainers, if you have them, your whatever, we're not immune to any of these things that you're going through. So if you have a coach and they're telling you like, no, just do this, you can figure it out. I don't know why you're struggling. Probably not the right coach for you. <laughs> they're saying they're not struggling. They've got nothing left to learn. Probably not the right coach to you. We struggle too. We're all human on this side of heaven, filled in a land with sin that we're trying to navigate through. It's, it's hard. <laughs> you know, to go through these things. So I'm on the treadmill, um, there's TVs there. I am a weirdo, I do not watch the TV while I'm on there. I really focus on my form, I use it as a mirror. I'm like, all right, are my shoulders up? <laughs> like, am I running weird? Um, I used to coach running, so I'm looking very much at my form and it helps me. But there was a praying mantis on the window. And this came right after I saw it right after I was praying to God about this live. I was like, man, I do not know what to say. And I saw this praying mantis out of the corner of my eye. And he was eye level to me. He was just one window over, you know, not, not a long thing. And I was like, oh, I, love, I haven't seen a praying mantis in so long. I love them. I think they are so cool. Um, they remind me of like ninja karate movies, but also, they're, they're really cool. I don't know if anyone else likes praying mantises, but I think they are awesome. The point of the story is I don't even know how long it was there before I saw it, but I saw it and it was sort of what I was looking at the entirety of my run. And then I started watching other people walk by. So the treadmills are directly in front of, I'm facing a window. It's a line of windows. There's a sidewalk out front. My daughter does jujitsu next door. I run while she's in there. So there's people walking all about. No one saw this praying mantis. So I don't know, maybe um, you, they don't like bugs, um, but I feel like most people, even if you don't like bugs, are intrigued by a praying mantis. So cool. You can let me know if I'm wrong, if you're a bugophobe and you don't like praying mantis, you can be like, no, Heather, we don't. But 30 people, I believe I counted, um, around 30. This is where my mind goes when I'm working out. I'm like, I'll count people that don't see this praying mantis. Right there, not far, this far, maybe a foot from them, eye level. And mind you, I'm 5'2", so everyone's not my eye level. Most people are higher up. But um, eye level, because I'm on a treadmill and it's higher, I'm looking at all of these people who are looking into the gym, looking at other people doing what they're doing and not noticing this praying mantis, right? M Michelle says, they're cool, they're cool, and they are. No one's noticing this bug. One person did, and it was a little child. There were people walking by on their phones. There were people checking out who was working out. Not like checking out like, ooh, who's working? Like just looking to see what they were doing. It wasn't in a weird way. Um, waiting for their kids in jujitsu. I recognized a lot of parents that were sort of just walking back and forth, looking blindly at things, not really looking at anything in particular. And one child noticed it and her mom was on the phone. She pointed to it and her mom was like, shh, I'm on the phone. Um, 
And then she tapped her mom again. She's like, look. And she was like, hey, like, I'm on the phone. And she's looking at the parking lot now. And the third time she did it, she looked and she was like, ah. And they started talking about it. And then other people started noticing it. And they were like, oh, my gosh, that's so cool. I want to ask you, how often do we do that with the spirit of God? And how often do we do that with the presence of God around us? He says he's here. His spirit lives in you. He has never left nor forsaken you. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The only thing that changes is us. He is constant. We are not. And how often are we in a situation, maybe with our kids, maybe with our marriage, maybe with our fitness, maybe with our food, maybe as we transition into our jobs, that we say we don't see God. We don't see God. We don't feel God. We don't know how he could be working right now. We don't know how this could be happening and we don't see God. I wanna challenge you that he's never left. He's been there. You're looking in the wrong direction. You're looking at the wrong thing. You are distracted. You're looking at it. Like some of these people I thought saw the bug, right? I thought they saw the praying mantis. But everyone has that same reaction. When you see a big bug, regardless of what it is, you're like, oh, okay, there it is. Now I know that this isn't going to hurt me, so it's cool now, but that was also, ooh, that was big. Okay. You know when someone sees that. No one. 30 plus people until this one child walked by and even she tried to get the attention of her mom three times it took her to get the attention of her mom how many people are tapping on you sending you messages uh, maybe calling you that you're ignoring maybe saying good words to you that you're not really listening to because you're distracted right too much stuff going on in your own life that you can't reach out to someone else that you can't even take those blinders off for a minute and go what else is here I'm feeling anxious, I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling sad, I'm feeling mad. What else is here? I'm distracted by all these feelings, but I'm not feeling my father at all. What else is here? 30 people walked by that and didn't even see it. They looked like they saw it, some of them. Some of them blatantly were looking at the window but missed it. We can miss God by our own actions. That's what I wanna challenge you with today. If you're in a situation that it feels hard and that you feel forgotten and you feel that God isn't looking at you and that he has left you, he is not. He's right here. We can just be distracted with other things and not feel him. I believe that is the enemy's true calling to distract you from what God has planned for you. To distract you. He tried to distract Jesus in the wilderness, right? Distract him with hunger distract him with how long this is taking, distract him to challenge God. And now more than ever, there's distractions on our phone, with our schedules. We look so much to make sure our schedules are filled or our kids' schedules are filled and they're going here and they're going there and we become the taxi that we miss God in that moment. We miss that he's standing right here next to us. We could be looking right at him, but we're looking right through him. We aren't listening for the spirit moving in us. We're so focused on all the distractions around us, all the obligations we have, all the other things we have to do, that we miss God, right? We miss God. So, um, Sarah says, what about the idea of grieving the Holy Spirit? You'll have to elaborate on that. When I think about our fitness and our nutrition, so often we hear about things we don't want to do, things we don't think we should do. Um, we spend more time worrying about the type of exercise that we're going to do rather than exercising. We spend more time trying to meal prep 
than it would take to actually meal prep. How many women here have looked on the internet and gone through YouTube and looked out, Googled, what's the best workout for toning? What's the best workout for weight loss? What's the best workout for this? It's not the workout. As a fitness coach, as a personal trainer, it's not the workout. It's your nutrition. It's a little bit of your workout. But if you use your workout as an excuse not to walk the rest of the day, then it's not about the workout. It's all on what you eat and what you're fueling your body with. So we miss the whole point of what it would be doing by being distracted. Distracted with the internet, distracting with needing more knowledge, distracted with needing more guidance, distracted with needing whatever else more that you need, you think you need, you are distracted with that. God has given you everything you need to push forward. If you have two legs, you can do jump ropes. If you have a broken ankle, you can do tricep dips. You can do crunches. If you have a bad back, you can walk. There is something that everyone can do. You do not need more Google searches. You need to go, I'm not gonna procrastinate on this anymore. I'm going to look for it. I'm going to actually do it. Paralysis by analysis, I like it. In with the hubby. It's true, we get so sidetracked with needing more knowledge that we don't do it. We don't see right in front of us that all we need to do is go for a walk. It's right there. We have a sidewalk, right? We have access to a treadmill. We have access to a gym. Even if you can't afford a personal trainer, there's $10 gym monthly memberships that they're banking on you forgetting about coming out of your monthly statement. You can go walk on one of their treadmills. You could walk outside. You could jump rope. You could do a few push-ups. Stop trying to have everything all perfect before you get started. You could have the perfect plan. I'm, I'm actually work, writing a plan right now for a client. I'm writing her workout plan. Even when I have it perfect with 23 years, good morning, of experience programming, it's still not going to go to plan. There's still going to be something in here that isn't 30 minutes. We're going to go over. I've got a lot of my clients in here that are going to go, yeah, she always says one more rep and it's not that. Or she totally forgot um, the time and now we rushed through <laughs> something else. It's never perfect. If it's not perfect for me, 23 years experience program planning, stop expecting it to be perfect for you when you go out on your first walk. You're going to get sweaty before mile one. You're going to get sweaty before you hit the first bend in your neighborhood. It's okay. You're going to be out of breath going up and down the stairs a few times. It's okay. It's okay. You're moving. You're doing something more than you did. So we so often look in scripture for God to speak to us and we move through it. And I found myself this past week doing that. And that's why Saturday I got to the point where I was like, I've, I've read the Bible, Lord. I don't have a scripture speaking to me. What do you want to speak to me? He goes, I've been speaking to you the whole time. But you were looking for your own personal gain for this and not for me to change you. That's where this praying mantis came in. And I go, oh my gosh, he's been here all along, but I've just been dismissing. I've been dismissing what he's been saying, going, nah, that's not right. That can't be right. No, I can't do that. Are you crazy? No, no, no. Or reading just to read. We talked about this a lot, just well, my goal is to read a Bible in the year. Is it to read the Bible in the year or is it to read the Bible to get something from it, to get to get more knowledge, to be challenged by it? I've been hitting all these challenging spots and I'm like, man, this is difficult. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. But we want to see this like beautiful ending. We want to start our food prep and have it look like, you know, one of those TikTokers. I'm, I'm obsessed with them um, that make their fridges all look all nice. They're like, this is how we unpack. This is what we do. It doesn't matter how it looks. It matters how you execute on it. 
we could see it and not really see it, right? A lot of those people, hey, Christy, were looking at the praying mantis, but they didn't see it. They just missed it and walked right by. I'm going to challenge you, how many opportunities are we walking by because of our busyness, because we think we can do it on our own, because we think we need more info from the internet or from the world or for, from whatever? We don't. And, and this could hurt me, right? You don't need a personal trainer all the time. You need more self-confidence. You need more self-control. You need more of the spirit giving fruits. And those things hurt. Those things aren't easy to get. I just need more self-control when it comes to chocolate. Have you tried praying over it? Have you tried talking to God about that? Have we tried realizing that this emotional eating is really just us trying to take something from the world to fill a void that only God can fill? We're just trying to be happy for a minute, but it really only leads us to shame and guilt. We're, we're trying to take from the world what only the, that God can give, what only the spirit can fill us with. I'm like, oh, well, I deserve this. We don't deserve this life. It is a miracle we were here. But then we start speaking, right? Oh, I deserve this ice cream. I've been good all week. Imagine if Jesus did that. <laughs> Maybe not with ice cream. But like, they deserve this. I've talked to them how many times and they just don't listen. They deserve this. I'm just going to sit back and let them have it. They deserve this. He doesn't do that. He's not looking at your life like you deserve this. Look what you did. Heather, Christy, Robin, Sarah. Look what you did. You deserve this. Jesus isn't looking at you like that. He's looking at the challenge as a way to step you up and raise you and produce more fruit. And we look at the challenge like it's suffocating and like we deserve this pain. We shouldn't be here. All of those ways of thinking. But we look right past what God's trying to do. We are so quick to blame the enemy that we look right past the fact that it could be Jesus speaking to us and challenging us. In order for us to step up, we have to face something. Have you anyone built a wall or like a retaining wall or anything like that? Like you need to stack the bricks up so you can, you can go higher. These things that are coming at you are like bricks. And we view them as like railroads, like us getting hit in the face with bricks, right? Like, man, I just keep getting hit in the face. I keep getting knocked down. God's like, pick up those bricks and start stacking them so that you can level up, so that you can step up. Paxton, when he first started playing basketball, was on like a, I don't know, if Dustin's still here, he can tell you, eight foot, six foot, some short hoop when he was six or five or whatever age that he started playing. He's going on 13. He's not playing on a six foot, eight foot hoop anymore. He's playing on a 10 foot hoop, but he had to take those challenges and those progressive steps up to get there. He didn't just start at 10. We started lower. We didn't just start with the ladder built. We are building it. So take those bricks that you feel like are suffocating you and bruising you and banging you down and start going, well, this is my ladder. This is my next step. This challenge that is coming at me right now is something God is working through me and I need to change. Is it food? All right, God keeps throwing food <laughs> as a challenge to me. I know it sounds funny, right? God's using food, but he's trying to grow your self-control. That is a fruit of the spirit. He's trying to teach you something through this that you don't need the worldly process, 70% fillered stuff crap that's in food. You need what he provided. He provided everything for you, but we look past it. We look right past the veggies 
and we go, well, I'm seeing something else on the other side of the store. I don't know, chips, whatever, you, whatever, however your grocery store is set up. I see that, or I see the soda. Maybe for some of you, it's I see the wine. Maybe for some of you, it's I see the energy drinks. Believe me, I, I get it. But we look right past the blessings that God has put here for us, and we look to the world. Or we just miss it altogether. So many people miss that praying mantis that we're looking straight at it i don't want us to miss the blessing that god's calling you to in this season through your health through your fitness through your uh, nutrition i don't want you to miss that if the answer is right in front of you the answer lives within you but we keep sort of shoving it aside or looking at it and looking through it and we're missing it it's right under our nose and we walk right past it i don't want us to do that anymore when you're having issues with your nutrition stop talking to them as issues and talk to them as this is my building brick i'm going to build up this brick i am not going to be able to eat clean overnight that's not my expectation that's a wrong expectation if you've been filling yourself with worldly foods that are meant to make you addicted to them, first, stop being surprised that you're addicted to sugar. Stop being surprised that you're addicted to processed foods. Stop being surprised that you're um, having these things. The world has made these foods for you to be addicted to. They really aren't trying to help you or cure you or any of that. They're not. So... Stop being surprised. I might have an addiction to sugar, processed foods, whatever, but I am going to look for God's goodness even in this grocery store, even in this challenge, even in this struggle, because in order for me to step up, I have to take this brick and stack it. It takes work. It's going to take work for you to food prep. It's not gonna look really nice, right? Robin, she tried to make her fridge and cabinets look nice. I do all the time and then kids come in and ruin it and I've given up on that. <laughs> given up on that entire dream that I could have something looking like that. But even the things they're packing in their fridge and their pantry aren't good, right? They're lining up sodas really nicely. They're lining up, I don't know, other things, snacks. I don't need it to look organized. I need to be able to reach in and grab an apple, a fruit, something that God made for our bodies to digest and process and eat. We need more of what God produced and less of what the world has processed. That's with our mindset. That's with us being distracted. That's with our food choices. That's with moving our bodies. We don't need to go to a gym and have a ton of weights. I know there's power lifters, Heather, <laughs> out there that love it. The whole reason we have gym was built on man, right? It was a 50s thing. They, the United States started realizing that we were um, falling behind Russia and China and all these other countries in health and we were getting fat. So they were like, well, let's just make gyms. Let's make gyms and they can work out. Before that, we were just moving. All you have to do is move more. We sit here and then go, our back hurts and my shoulders hurt. Well, you haven't stood up from your seat in eight hours. Your back and your neck and your hips are going to hurt. We need to move more. You don't need a gym. You don't need fancy equipment. You don't need that. You just need to get up every 60 minutes and walk for six. I talk about this a lot. Like, what are you doing with the 10% tithing, 10% of your time, 10% of your energy, 10% of anything. What are you doing with that 10%? Are you giving it back to God? Or are you just going, I'll get to that later. I'm, I'm going to miss it. I mean, I've got too much to do. I've got too much to do. The next time you say you don't have enough time to work out, to food prep, to exercise, to move, to pray, to add in some, some things that are from God, you don't have enough time for that. Your priorities are wrong. 
That's what it comes down to. If you give me a list, and I make all of my clients do this, give me a list of what a typical day looks like for you. I can tell you exactly what you hold high up on your list. Other people, other things, your kids. Your kids need you. Your kids need you to be healthy. We want to change generational chains of unhealthy. Gluttony is still a sin. Overeating is still a sin. We look so much. We just um, had all these different things happen in Charlotte. Um, we look so much at murderers and um, the LGBTQ and all these other things. We're still judging. We're still casting a stone. We're still throwing things. Gluttony is still a sin. We're still overeating, still not able to have self-control. We look so much at all these other things that God goes, just look at me. The one thing right in front of you. I don't need you looking at everybody else. Those people walking by the outside of the gym were just looking at what everybody else was doing. Do we not do that? Well, what are they doing? And what are they going to think? And what are they going to think? Will they be offended? Why don't we just look at God and go, what do you think? Okay, well then I'm going to do that. I'm going to grow that. What do you think? God, what did you make? Am I going to eat an apple or am I going to eat, I don't know, my mom used to have these brownies all the time. Um, the ones that are like rectangle and they were kind of split in two and they had sprinkles on them totally highly processed highly sugar food like man i've always had that so that's where my habits want me to go but what is the spirit trying to move in me can i look at the apple in a new way can i look at fruit and vegetables in a new way i don't eat vegetables well god made you to eat vegetables so you do your habits just have not lined up with what god's habits for your nutritional self should be god made fruits and vegetables for you to eat so for you to say you just don't like them it like goes against what god made god made all of these things before making man knowing this is what you needed to eat you're gonna be good like the broccoli's not gonna kill you but what is going to kill you is living off of these processed foods that the world has made and transformed into something that they're not. In order to break that, that generational chain of unhealthiness, diabetes, obesity, uh, all these different things, autoimmune things, we're gonna have to do something different than we were doing before. We're going to have to see a holistic doctor maybe. We're going to have to take a deep dive and say, I have to change how I eat. We're going to have to take a deep dive and say, I'm going to have to change my priorities so I do have time to move. So I do have time to pray more. So I do have time to hear from him more. I'm going to have to be not so busy because it looks good on a calendar and I need to, I don't like being silent and alone and be silent and alone for the spirit to speak. I don't want to be dazed walking around with God next to me and the spirit living in me. Like, mm, are you even there? And they're like, hello, yes, we are. You just keep walking by because you're distracted. We're here. And the spirit whispers. The enemy screams. So if the world is doing something loudly and it catches your attention and you look at it, it's probably not, not, not from God if the world is screaming it and doing it. But if you hear that silent whisper when I'm on a treadmill without, you know, anything going on where I can go, hey, God, meet me here. I go, great, I will. He will. Ask. Ask him to meet you here with your fitness goals. Ask him to hit you, uh, meet you here. Not hit you. Maybe. Wake up. Ask him to help you wake up earlier. Ask him to help you give you the energy to work out. Ask him to help you to get through these hard times. He will. 
and know that your weakness isn't you being a failure. It's you leaning on God. You failing your food prep is okay. You're leaning on God and you're learning. You not hitting all of your whatever step goal you have. It's okay. You're learning. You're getting closer. You're a little bit closer than you were yesterday. Let's not look past. Let's not look for more information. Let's not look for what everybody else is doing. Let's not look for approval from this world. Let's really look at that one thing and have that childlike faith in your fitness. Let your kids run around. Go ahead, run around and be goofy. I don't care if you run like Monica. Just get out there. Right? Just get out. go have fun with your kids. Stop researching the best workouts. Half of those best workouts aren't good for your body. I don't have energy. I go to CrossFit three times a week. And I'm still depleted. Well, those workouts deplete you. And they add inflammation to your body. So if you're not specifically training for something like that, you don't need that. You need a walk. You need to jump rope. You need to go for a jog. Play soccer with your kids outside. Throw the baseball. Move however you want. You don't need to add more stress to your body. You need to just move. You need to just move. I always talk about my favorite professor in college. He's, um, he never went to gyms ever. Um, he always just used what nature provided. He goes, if God put it here, it can be used. He would pick up boulders and like lift them and, and put them down. He would squat with these random huge tree branches, <laughs> like just be squatting um, whenever we would go out on little expeditions. He was picking up everything and like looking at it and appreciating it and loving it. It was so awesome. It was so awesome. Everything in nature he used, he thanked God for it, he put it back and he kept on with his walk. If we were on the beach and he was walking, he used the ledge to do his balance on one side, the ledge to balance balance on the other side. He stood there, he'd be like, thank you for this amazing drop off today. And I'd be like, this guy's crazy. This drop off is going to kill us. <laughs> this is the worst. But he was always giving thanks. Give thanks for the food that you're gonna eat even if you don't wanna eat it. Give thanks for the workout that you're gonna do even though you don't wanna do it. Give thanks for the time that you feel like you don't have that God will make for you if you're doing it for the right reasons. Look, have that childlike faith. God's tapping on you just like that girl was tapping on her mom. Like, look, I'm too busy. Are you too busy? I'm too busy for, to work out. I'm too busy to food prep. I'm too busy. I'm, I don't have enough time. I wish I had enough time. You do. You do have enough time. Your priorities are wrong. If I have enough time, you have enough time. You can ask all of my coaches, two, three. I don't know how many are in here. You can ask my husband, do I have enough time? You would look at it and go, no. She's got a lot going on. I schedule that time. Schedule yourself blocks of emptiness. And stop filling them in with things. Like, ugh. Fridays are off for me. They're an off day. It took a very long time for me to not schedule people on Fridays. Um, but you got to say no to some stuff. That's not bringing you closer to Jesus. That's not bringing you closer to God. That's not bringing you closer to your health goals. That's not bringing you closer to your family goals. Work on your marriage. Work on your parenting with God. Work on your nutrition with God, not expecting the ladder to be built overnight, but to take one thing at a time. And when you get that tap from the spirit going, he's right there. God's watching you right now. Right now. Don't go, ah, I'm fine. Be like the child that saw the praying mantis like, oh, he's right here. He's right here in your pain in your sorrow, in your suffering, in your struggle, in your busyness, he's here. He's here. You're not late. You're not behind. But let's recognize him now and make choices like he's here, like the spirits living in us that would honor him, that we would go up to heaven and go, how was it? <laughs> Good. Good job, servant. I gave you a little and you multiplied it to more. He gave us all the same starting point. 
We're all born exactly the same way. We are all born exactly the same way. Yes, into different uh, financial situations, into different things, but we all come out naked and crying. What are we going to do with what was given to us? We were all given that. Are we going to multiply it? Are we going to do more with it? Or are we going to run ourselves down? We're not going to be able to finish the race strong because we just sat here busy, not moving, our joints hurt. I want, I want all of you women to be reached in a way that is supernatural and not transformed by what this world tells you health looks like. It doesn't have to look like that doesn't have to be like that God's speaking to you and I hope he's speaking to you right now about one thing that you could change and go instead of resenting this I'm going to worship in it I don't need to look up any more information I don't need to be paralyzed by needing to know everything I just need to like move I just need to food prep I just need to get this right because I think that I'm going to be happy when I'm 135 pounds, but you're not if this doesn't change. I think I'm going to be happy when I'm fitting into the bathing suit in Mexico. You might be temporarily happy, but if this doesn't change, you're not. If this doesn't change, you're not. So let's change our hearts. Let's change our focus. Not on our weight and not on our pant size, but on our faith and on the spirit that lives in us and on the home that he's given us temporarily here. Let's multiply. Let's do good for our bodies. Let's be those beacon of lights for people. Let's see the praying mantis and not just look through it. Remember that's, don't look through God. That's a visual that he gave me. Are you looking right through me? Are you reading just to read? Are you doing just to do? Are you running just to run? Like, or are you doing this for the right reasons? So, if you need help in any of those areas, and you go, I don't need more information. I need, how to, I, I need to know how to actively put this into my life. I need to know realistically how to make this work into my life. We can chat, absolutely. I have coaches ready to chat with you. I'm ready to chat with you. We can talk to you about what our different programs look like and how to get you moving on those things. We don't need to know that we need to move. We need to move. We don't know, need to know that we need to eat healthy. We, we need to change how we eat. We need to change how we think about food. If you're ready to do that, you can comment below. Um, I was going to have you comment below praying mantis, but then I was like, how do you even spell mantis? <laughs> so we'll just comment below ready. If you want to have that conversation about putting things into action. Yes, with knowledge. And yes, with science, but with scripture. The only way for us to figure out what works best for you is for us to try it out. And all those failed things that didn't work, it's just God telling you, that's not for you. That wasn't for you. That was for the world. That was for you doing it for the wrong reasons. That was for other things. Let's do it to take care of me. Me being the spirit. Do it to take care of the spirit living in you. All right, ladies, have an amazing rest of your week. I am looking forward to seeing you not next Monday. I will be traveling the Monday after. Um, we do have a bunch of new programs that are in place now. So if you have talked to me about the Methodized Mom and that wasn't affordable for you, we have more affordable plans that lead you through a bunch of different things, not just your faith and your food, but also your finances. Um, also your marriage, also making sure you have enough time to have fun in this world, making sure you have enough time for your faith, um, all these different things that we are going to be working on together. So even if we have talked and the methodized mom wasn't right for you, we've built something else that can help you um, along the way too and get action steps ready for you. Comment ready below if you're ready for that, Shannon. I see you. We will be messaging you and I will talk to you ladies soon. Have an awesome week. Bye.